Hi, how you doing? Good, I hope. Um, please don't mind my eyes. Unfortunately, with spring and fall these days, it seems that due to my hay fever allergies, I keep getting like eye infections around those times and it's no big deal. I need to learn to keep my fingers away from my itchy eyes. <laughs> Live and learn, right? Roll with the punches, it's inconvenient and I can't really see well right now because I have an antibiotic gel in it. So, but in any case, hopefully it's not too much of a distraction. I wanted to come on here today to share a little story. Um, it's not a personal one. It's a story about the idea around good and bad, okay? And it's just, it's just, this video stands on its own, but I did want to put this out there as a precursor to a series that I'm looking to put out later this week or throughout the week. In any case, um, this story was shared to me by my um, Reiki teacher. And uh, it's, it's not going to be verbatim. I'm just going to basically share the gist of it in my own words, but hopefully most of it is accurate. <laughs> Ultimately, though, it's the idea of what it means that I'm trying to get across, okay? Because in, especially with everything happening in our world right now, a lot of times things are perceived to be good or bad depending on our internal belief structures and, or even our surroundings and the people around us and, and what they tell us is good or bad how we were raised, Every, I mean, it all comes together in what our perception is. Also, you know, what we choose to focus on. That doesn't mean bury our head in the sand and not pay attention, but sometimes we just have to be mindful of how much attention we're paying and in what areas. And that's where, you know, as I've said in other videos, balance is really important. But that's not what this video is about. I just like to tie things together in nice little packages when I can. So this story, okay, again, is about good and bad and our ideas around what that is, okay? So I'm going to start with, let's say it's early 1900s. I don't know. And there's this farmer who lives in a remote village somewhere in the world. And he has a son, and it's just he and his son. His son is coming of age. The world is in turmoil. Maybe going off to war. I don't know. In any case, he's a poor man, humble man. Okay, I don't want to say poor. He's humble. Uh, and there's not a lot of people in the village. But they, they do try to rally around each other. So... One day he discovers that this stallion out of nowhere moseyed into his fence, fenced in area, corral. And um, I just thought a happenstance. It, it was not, he didn't try and lure him in. It's just he woke up one morning to feed his chickens and saw that there was a stallion where he had no horses at all. And this was considered fortuitous. Um, by his, the, his fellow villagers. So he shut the stallion in and um, this, was, this was exciting. And the villagers came and celebrated with him and said, this is good, this is good that you now have the stallion. And, and the man, the older man was like, weighing his hands like a scale and he was kind of like, good, bad, I don't know, right? So he had the stallion and he fed him for probably, I don't know, a couple of months or whatever. And it cost him because, you know, he had to feed him and everything. And then one day the stallion breaks down his fence and disappears. And the villagers came and they were like, ooh, this is bad. This, this is not good. And the old, older man was like, with his hands weighing the scales, and he's like, I don't know, good or bad. On one hand, I don't have to feed the stallion, right? Because what was the stallion doing for me? 
not much. On the other hand, now I have a broken fence. However, if I look at it from the fact that now I can reinforce my fence, I don't know, good or bad. So he fixed his fence where he could, he patched it up, made it stronger and went on with his life. Oh, well, probably a month or so later, all of a sudden the stallion shows up with six mare. Wow, right? Now maybe he can actually breed the horses. Whatever the case may be, now he has a reinforced fence, he closes the fence, he has the, the stallion and the mares now, and they can't get away because it's a reinforced fence. The villagers show up. Wow, you are so lucky. This is fortuitous. This is awesome. This is, this is very good. And the older man was like, I don't know, good or bad. It is what it is, right? And during this time, his son gets drafted because there's a world war that broke out, right? And... Well, not happy about that, but again, good or bad, everyone's on their own life path, right? So one day his son goes out and he starts riding the horse, one of the horses, one of the mares or whatever, or the stallion, and, and he ends up getting bucked because the horses weren't tamed and he was trying to tame them and he gets bucked and ends up losing his leg because it went septic, whatever the case may be. They were remote, didn't have medical care. And the, the villagers came to help out where they could and they were like, this is bad, this is bad. And the older man, the father was like, I don't know, good or bad, it is what it is. And then they find out that the, the people, the platoon that his son was supposed to go with they all ended up dying in war. I don't know, good or bad, right? So you can go on and on with scenarios like this in your own life. There's a lot of times where we deal with difficulties in our life that we perceive as bad because it impacts us on a negative level where it might make us sad, might make us cry, might make us happy. Maybe we perceive it as good. At the end of the day, it is what it is. What creates the good and bad is our perception around it, our subjective representation, if you will. How do I choose to look at this? Do I look at this as an opportunity for growth and learning? Or do I look at this as a deficit somehow? this was taken from me, or I'm less than, or I was judged harshly, or I don't know, there's so many things. There's so many things where we might feel victimized or we may feel like we're on top of the world. At the end of the day, we are who we are. And what puts us in our fields oftentimes is the belief structures and systems that we have around that. And oftentimes what shapes those beliefs are our experiences and interactions with other people. If you think of early childhood development, right? Some say in the first like five, six years, we're a human sponge. We don't have a filter when we're little. So we don't have discernment of what we internalize and what we don't. Pretty much everything that's fed to us, I'm not saying this is true, but I've heard this. Everything that's said to us is internalized to some degree. And it feeds a lot of those foundational belief systems that impact us for the rest of our lives. And the funny thing is, is that a lot of people don't even remember those memories. Because there's a lot of people that don't remember the first five years, six years. Some people don't even remember the first 10 years of their lives, depending on how their brain works and, and the experiences that they had. So I just find it interesting in any case. I wanted to share that story with you. So if you're going through any kind of difficult times, I'm not saying 
negate your emotions or, or pretend that it's not difficult. Honor yourself for sure. If you need to cry, you cry. If you want to laugh, you laugh, right? It's about being in the moment. And if you are going through something difficult, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? Or relearn, right? And sometimes, is there something I can do to fix this? If not, how do I let it go? Because not every problem that comes across our door is our problem to solve, right? So there's more to it, obviously. I could talk for an hour on it. Well, at this point, you probably know me. I could talk for an hour on anything because <laughs> I like to talk. In any case, I'm going to shut up now. So <laughs> I hope that if nothing else, it gives you a second thought on when you're going through anything positive, negative, about the judgments that you put on situations, on people, on yourself. You don't have to judge in that sense. We do need to use discernment and discernment is a skill that comes to us naturally, but can quickly spiral into judgment. If you remember, I think I used the, the example one time of, I discern if there's enough water in the pool so that if I dive in, I'm not gonna break my neck, right? But if I'm sitting there looking at the water and think it's dirty, it's a judgment if it's, I don't want anything to do with your pool or you because you people are gross, right? It's a discernment of this water's dirty, I don't wanna get an infection. It's a judgment when we make it about, well, I gave the example. <laughs> Call it what you will. <laughs> so be mindful, because we all have that ability to do that. And we've all done it. We've all been judgy. Because it's too easy not to be. However, when you find yourself being judgy, especially if it's about yourself, ask yourself truly, what is it about this that I can learn from? Maybe I just need to be a little more mindful of where my thoughts go. I don't know, everyone's different. So I'm gonna leave it there. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye.